sorry I was away last week, but I was on a vacation. Yeah, went to Nabu. And, oh, maybe I'll make a little bit about that. But today, that's not what we're here for. Today, we are going to talk about the two not Jane Austen books that I have read this month. So far, and most likely I will not read any others. Well, at least finish any others. So, the first one is The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. This was, I believe, hmm, I guess I don't know exactly when it was written. I think it's later than Victorian, though, and probably before World War II, which is still a pretty big uh, area. So I guess early modern is most likely. But Enchanted April, this is the story of four women. Uh, the two started and it goes from there. Uh, they see an ad in the paper uh, for uh, a month in a castle in Italy, basically. And for various reasons, all four definitely feel the need for a vacation. Uh, let's see, I want to say it all starts with Lottie, who is perfectly miserable, no, she is perfectly miserable, feels she's not uh, acting like the type of wife her husband wants. Mm, the one thing he does approve of is she is thrifty, so she actually does have a bit of a savings account, even though she's probably the least well off of the four ladies. And she meets Rose, who she recognizes from at church, although uh, Rose doesn't really recognize her as Lottie is so fearful of doing the wrong thing, she's usually very quiet. Rose has her own issues. Uh, she is not happy with her husband's profession, and so she has sunk her life into go doing good deeds, which on the one hand has helped, on the other hand hasn't solved any problems nor has it made her really happy. And then, let's see. Um, I forget her name, but she is an older lady. She is a true Victorian. Uh, her husband is dead. She lives in the past. When she talks, it is always about Carlyle said this, or Tennyson did that, or something along those lines. And then there is Lady Caroline, I believe. She has been disappointed in love and life. And, well, her situation is in some ways the most complicated because she looks, well, frankly, amazing. And so she has all the guys after her. At first, that was exciting when she first came out. Not so much anymore. She feels like it is all the wrong type of attention, and she is tired of it. And the one guy that she actually did trust, sadly, he died in the war. So she feels like she needs a vacation on that 
background. So these four ladies, first they don't even really know each other, but Rose and Lottie, they see the uh, ad in the newspaper, one thing leads to another, they request the castle for the month of April in Italy and manage to find ways to get there. And the editor included to help defray expenses. And so they all end up at this castle. Uh, Lottie and Rose, hmm, from the start they get on the best. Lady Catherine doesn't really want any attention at all, just wants to be left alone. And as for the old lady, unfortunately, uh, she rubs people the wrong way a lot herself. Although she says she wants to spend a lot of time alone. Indeed, she starts that way. But it is April in Italy in a castle. Not only April in Italy, but one of the most beautiful Aprils. Even the servants there can remember, even though they are more used to such things. And it slowly works their magic on all of them. Oh. So, when I started reading it, I was enchanted, and it was fun to see how one by one, these ladies started to change. But towards the end, there was one aspect that was, um, I did not appreciate. Unfortunately, it did not go completely there, but there are hints it could have gone there. And I don't know. Somehow I just didn't like how it ended as much as it began or the middle. Like, not sure I can put my finger on why. I wish I could. But I still quite enjoyed it. No regrets at all. And so there was that. And I also read The Matchmaker's Lonely Heart by Nancy Campbell Allen. This is from the Proper Romance imprint. And this one, oh, uh, young ladies are trying to become more independent. And no hint of World War One, so I suspect it is uh, from about some time between 1900 and 1914. That would be my guess. So on the one hand, you have our heroine, whose name I can't remember, but she lives with two cousins that she grew up in basically a boarding house. And all three of them work for their aunt's uh, magazine. It is uh, a women's magazine and our heroine primarily works for basically the dating column. <laughs> giving dating advice, uh, hooking up potential dates with each other that she thinks might be a good match. Oh, and on the other side, we have a detective. You see, there was a young lady found in the Thames. Uh, and there's a suspicion of foul play with her murder. And they do locate the husband, but he forbids an autopsy. But even just without the autopsy, there's something not quite right going on. 
And so he informally is still keeping an eye on the husband. And when he is doing this, he sees the husband uh, not too long after his wife's decease, meeting with a lady in a proper, uh, would be the equivalent probably of a coffee shop these days, uh, going on a date. Well, technically he can, but still suspicious, and he sees uh, our magazine columnist there watching them. Come to find out that she had set up Mr. Former Husband, who's now a widower, up with a lady from her advice column. And she wanted to see how their first date went to make sure it went off. Unbeknownst to her, uh, this widower is also a guy who he ha she has seen in her book group and has spooned over in her book group. So the detective uses her to get an introduction to said book group and see if he can get more information on this widower. And at first, our uh, dating columnist, uh, she is, doesn't like him at all. But of course, the more they get to know each other, the more sparks get to fly, and the more things along, go along, the more his suspicions start to be confirmed and things start taking more dangerous turns. So we've got a proper romance combined with a mystery here. So. Light, but fun. Quite enjoyed it. Uh, Nancy Campbell Allen is one I have read before, I believe. Um, I think she did My Fair Gentleman. There might have been more as well. Maybe The India Orchid. Anyway, all enjoyable. Just what I needed, recovering from vacation. <laughs> the vacation was wonderful, but it did involve four days of driving, two each way, with a car full of kids. So it was good to have these two light reads to turn to when I wasn't able to concentrate on Jane Austen. So, how has your July reading been turning out? I'll be giving you a final report soon, including everything Jane Austen. But until then, I'd love to hear what you have to say, how it's been going for you, if you've found any new favorites, if you've been enjoying Jane Austen July. I really thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I think that is everything I have read that is not, as I said, related to Jane Austen. So, until next time, I hope we all stay safe and healthy, and as always, happy reading!